Scientific attitudes are important aspects of a personality, most especially to those who want to be successful in the field of science. Almost all scientists are believers. They believe that everything happens for a reason. For example, if a clock is not working, it may be because the batteries ran out of energy. Another example is when plants grew fast, it might be because on the fertilizers they put into it. Scientists also have curiosity. They ask questions and seek answers. Scientists are hungry for information, especially when things don't fall into pattern. For example, looking at a bridge, scientists often are curious how do bridges bear so much weight. Also, when they look in a dark sky, they become curious of what causes rain to form. People inclined to science are objective. They do not allow their feelings to influence their records and conclusions. They record and write their observations as it is. Example, when they see plant action like folding of its leaves whenever it is touched, scientists record them in their journals. Likewise, when they are recording the shadows appearing during daytime. Another scientific attitude is critical thinking. Scientists base suggestions and conclusions on evidences. Example, before arriving at a conclusion, they test all the possible methods. Also, they go beyond asking what and ask how and why questions. Another important scientific attitude is open-mindedness. Scientists listen and respect the ideas of others. They ask for permission before giving feedback and presenting results. Moreover, they do not interrupt when someone's sharing their thoughts. Scientists also possess inventiveness. They generate new and original ideas. Like in school, the grade 5 students build a robot that can measure the area of the classroom. In some activities, they combine colors aside from the given colors to enhance their work. Scientists are also risk takers. They try new ideas even at risk of failure or criticism. They are not afraid of performing or presenting their work in front of a large crowd. And in cooking, they make new recipes they have not tried before. One of the important attitudes of science enthusiasts is the respect for others' creations. They practice intellectual honesty, meaning they give truthful report of observations so others would not put into danger or harmed. For example, scientists advise us that adding more water to the cactus would not make it grow. Or even in our malfunctioning cars, replacing its batteries would make it start again. Scientists also possess humility. They admit their errors and recognize as other better ideas. For example, when a student put wrong ingredients in the mixture, the student accepts his mistake and work on making it right. Also, the leader appreciated the efforts of the team members. Finally, we all scientists have big responsibility. We should actively participate in tasks and perform our duties. Like at home, we don't rely to our mom or dad to constantly remind us to do our homework and maintain the cleanliness of our room. Those are the scientific attitudes that makes us successful in the field of science. Before you leave, I would like to ask, which of the attitudes do you have and which of them are you lacking? Better check yourself now. Until next time.
Hi class, for this lesson, we will talk about basic science process skills and how they are utilized in conducting scientific investigations. The key to doing science is understanding what scientists do. This primarily involves acquisition of knowledge, and there are several ways of acquiring knowledge. This can be through any of the following. Habits intuition or guesswork, authorities, reasoning, experiences, and science. Among those mentioned, acquiring knowledge through science is the most logical and systematic way. In order for us to acquire knowledge through science, we need some basic skills, and this include the following, observing, communicating, measuring, classifying, inferring, and predicting. Observing is a skill where we use our senses, sight, hearing, touch, taste, and smell. Observations can either be classified as qualitative or quantitative, both of which use our senses. In quantitative observations, we utilize instruments or tools such as rulers, balances, or thermometers to provide an observation that is measurable or quantifiable. After observation, we can now relay or communicate in order to share gathered information. This skill is called communicating. Measuring is another skill which involves ascertaining a property of a material and expressing it in a defined unit. As an example, the length of a wooden stick can be expressed in a standard unit called meter, while the mass of the same wooden stick can be expressed in grams. A measurement typically contains two parts. One, a number or magnitude, which tells how much or how many, and two, a unit or dimension which tells how much of what. Classifying is a skill which involves grouping of sets of information, objects, or events based on similarities, differences, and interrelationships. This skill is important because it is assumed that if a set of objects shares something in common, it may also share other attributes as well. Next skill is inferring, which can be derived from an outcome of an observed event. Inferences are explanations or interpretations that usually follow after an observation. Inferences are influenced by our own personal experiences and may change as we make more observations. Hence, our inferences may continually be modified and at times, can be accepted or rejected. Lastly, predicting is a skill defined as projecting about the outcome of an event. Good observations and good inferences may lead to sound predictions. Because predictions are based on observations and inferences, it is important to note that predictions are not simple guesses and are thus testable. As students, Integrating these basic science process skills will make our learning experience richer and more meaningful. These basic process skills will also become helpful when presented with problems and carrying out scientific investigations. That ends our lesson for today. I hope you enjoyed learning with us. For more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification button. I'll see you in the next lesson.